Hey, welcome to the show. Some of you guys might remember I did an earlier video about the comic series Superior Spider-Man. And you might remember... Burn, baby! Burn! 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 I didn't care for it. Not one bit. But... I suppose the fact of the matter is that a lot of us didn't like Superior Spider-Man. So the question then becomes, why? What was it about Superior Spider-Man that we didn't like? Well, there is the obvious fact that it's not a Spider-Man comic, it's a Dr. Octopus comic. I'm being dead serious. It's not just the fact that Dr. Octopus has taken over Peter Parker's life. It's the fact that everything is seen not through the lens of Peter Parker, but through the eyes of Dr. Octopus in every way, shape, or form. Everything that everybody else does, everything that Peter has done, is now seen through the eyes of Doc Ock, and he thinks he can do so much better than Peter. He's a self-righteous hypocrite. Oh, and then of course there's the fact that he almost went to bed with Mary Jane, and considering he was pretending to be Peter Parker, this borders on the edge of rape, so there's that. Oh, and then there's the little fact that he pulled out people's fingernails and teeth in the name of conducting science experiments on interesting specimens. My god, this is like Nazi-esque science experiments. It's Ugh. The point is that the whole book is not a Spider-Man book. It's not a Peter Parker book. There is no joy. There is no fun to be found. It's grim, dark, and depressing, and cruel. I did an entire video about how the whole reason why this entire book exists is because Dr. Octopus is essentially avoiding responsibility for trying to commit genocide of the entire human race by taking over Peter Parker's body. He then blames Peter Parker for things that aren't really Peter's fault, like the fact that supervillains kill. Oh gee, I guess being evil absolves you of all responsibility. Or the fact that a little girl got was about to be hurt because Peter wanted his body back. A little girl who was in a hospital bed only because of what Dr. Octopus had done to the planet, and she never would have been in danger in the first place had Doc Ock not done that. The whole thing is a lesson of avoiding personal responsibility for your actions as everybody around juggles the idiot ball and fails to notice that something is very wrong with Peter. The only way the story works is if everybody is a complete and utter and absolute idiot except for Doc Ock. Oh, and there was of course the ghost of Peter who was lingering around in Doc Ock's head, but somehow, after being inside of his body for only a few months at the most, Doc Ock somehow managed to mentally overcome Peter Parker in his own head. How? Just accept it. That's what they're telling you. Accept this! We couldn't. And I'm pretty sure that's the real reason they're finally bringing back Peter. Because we finally called them out and said, You know what? We're tired of this. He's not fun anymore. He's not interesting anymore. He's getting more horrible and horrible as time goes on. And we want to stop reading about Spock and start reading about Peter. And that's what they did. He's coming back in April. But... Are those the only reasons why fans didn't agree with the direction that Superior Spider-Man went? Are those the only actual reasons why so many fans actually went up in arms about Superior Spider-Man? To, to understand that, we're going to have to dive in deep to what it means to really be a fan of something. Imagine this hypothetical, if you will. It's been a long time since you actually got to enjoy comic books. So, 
After talking with your friends from high school, you decide to, for old time's sake, head into your local comic book store and look for your favorite superhero, Spider-Man. But much to your surprise, a new Spider-Man title is on the shelves. So you go to purchase it, interesting in finding out what it's like. And how do you feel? Well, the reactions ranged from... DISAPPOINTED! ...to acts that were a bit more extreme, like, say... NO! 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 THIS IS STUPID! THIS IS STUPID! And of course, there was my own personal reaction. But perhaps, maybe, our outrage was a bit unfair. Yes, we have a Spider-Man now that it does, in fact, kill. We've got a Spider-Man that now will mutilate his foes for the pettiest of reasons. We have a Spider-Man that will now t cold blood torture people. And I admit that's messed up. But we need to see superheroes, Spider-Man included, as, in essence, memes. Now, what is a meme? A meme is an element of culture that may be considered to be passed on by non-genetic means, especially imitation, and that means that as time goes on, they change. Either the creators of the comics get new ideas or they're forced to get new ideas, or the creators age and they gradually begin to think about the world differently. Or new creators arrive and add a new spin on things, or a character's popularity wanes and innovations are needed t to, well, rescue him. The point being that comic book characters change all the time. Superman went from being merely faster than a speeding bullet to somebody who could juggle planets. Batman went from an ordinary clothed detective into the Dark Avenger he is today. Spider-Man lost a lot of his nerdiness. The Fantastic Four got new superhero costumes. The Hulk went from gray to green, even red sometimes. And even the Green Lantern changed as time went on. First it was Alan Scott, then Hal Jordan, then Kyle Rayner, etc, etc, etc. Point being that superheroes change. Superhero comics change. Sometimes bad. In fact, sometimes for really bad reasons and in ways that make you just wince and go, what the heck were they thinking, and sometimes for better reasons. I can tie all of this back to Heraclitus, a Greek who lived about 2,500 years ago. He had said that we never step into the same river twice, meaning that everything is constantly in flux, and superheroes are included. Spider-Man is no longer the same character he was 40 years ago, 30 years ago, even 20 years ago. And, to be honest, neither is the reader. Now, I understand that fans want comic writers, artists, and editors to preserve a part of their childhood. The problem is that, in many ways, the creators simply can't, because, as I've said, the readers have changed over time. They got older, or they got married, they saw loved ones grow old and die. And because of this, the characters in comics will have to change, and somebody will eventually be outraged. And the, fa the fact is, you, listening to this, as time has gone on, you've changed. You can't step in the same river twice. Yeah, this version of Spider-Man isn't the one you grow up with, and maybe you're not his reader either. You've aged and grown up somehow, you've done some tough living, or maybe what once used to be an escape and an entertainment simply isn't anymore. But, you know what, in a way, you just have to think of Spider-Man as part of the vast, timeless dance of self. 
part of the cosmos that is continuously shifting and changing all around you. Even the most dedicated fan has to admit that reprinting the same old types of stories over and over would, in time, get boring. Some change, some innovation is necessary, because, in many ways, change is the only true constant in life. And I'm always going to be a fan of Spider-Man, no matter what. Superior still sucks, though. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches seeds just like guys. Look out!